98.7% of software engineering applicants never even get a phone interview. I used to be part of that statistic. Now I make $50,000 a month. And this happened because I changed one simple thing that anyone can do and achieve similar results. Hi, I'm Suleiman. I'm a cloud engineer and I run my own cloud security consultancy. With a decade of experience in this field, I've seen how the landscape is shifting. I used to be a front-end developer. But then I discovered that companies are hungry for something different. And I knew if I took advantage of this, it would put me in the top 1% of earners. I used this insight to not only transform my own career, but hundreds of students inside of my academy. What was this insight? Don't actually become a software engineer. And today I'm going to reveal the three reasons why and what you should do instead. Now, software engineering is actually undergoing a huge shift thanks to artificial intelligence. When I started as a front-end developer, I wrote every line of code myself. But in 2024, that's becoming a thing of the past. AI isn't just handling simple tasks anymore. It's designing user interfaces, writing complex algorithms, and even architecting entire systems. Let's take Devin, for example, the world's first fully autonomous AI software engineer. Devin can plan, analyze, and execute complex coding tasks with just a single prompt. On the Software Engineering Bench, a platform for testing AI on real-world coding issues, Devin solved 13.86% of all problems end-to-end. That's nearly 10x higher than everyone's favorite ChatGPT4 at 1.74%. But it's not just Devin. Cursor AI is a tool that helps programmers write code faster. It can automatically suggest or complete the code a programmer is writing. This tool is changing how software is made by making code quicker and easier for many developers around the world, but also non-developers too. Andre Carpathy, co-founder of OpenAI and former director of AI at Tesla, recently said that automating software engineering will look similar to automating driving. His vision suggests a significant shift in the role of software developers. In the future, instead of writing detailed code, developers will focus more on high-level planning and problem solving, whilst AI handles the nitty-gritty coding task. To be honest, software engineering has never been about writing code. It's been about solving problems. Because I think writing code is the easy part. This shift will translate to job losses and less job openings for entry-level coding positions. Because suddenly, AI is doing the majority of the heavy lifting. It will also devalue the skill of coding itself and increase the barrier to entry for new developers because now hands-on coding experience isn't as relevant anymore. Secondly, something which brings me to the days when I was working as a front-end developer, it used to be that getting a computer science degree pretty much guaranteed you a job when you graduated. But in 2024, the software engineering job market has become incredibly competitive. And I've seen this firsthand. Recently, I posted an ad for an entry-level developer a position at my cloud security consultancy. It was for a junior role requiring only basic coding skills and maybe a year or two of experience. And guess how many applications we received? Over 500 for one job. And many of these applicants were overqualified with years of experience and impressive portfolios. Now to put this into perspective as well, every day I have applications come through in my email of people offering to work for me for free. And I'm looking at their CV, five years of experience in the industry, which is crazy. Crazy. And that leaves me thinking, how has this happened? And I think there's a few factors in play here. Firstly, we've seen an explosion of coding boot camps over the last decade. Now, I attended one of these many years ago, and yes, they really helped me on my journey. And yes, we need training and upskilling, but we're also flooding the job market with entry level developers, and there aren't enough open positions to absorb this many people. Secondly, online learning platforms like Coursera and Udemy have made it easier easier than ever for people to learn coding skills on their own. And again, I'm not blaming people here. But my point is that this is also contributing to the job market saturation. And to add to that, there's been a big push in the last 10 years encouraging everyone to learn coding. It's been presented as a ticket to a high paying secure job. While this can be true, it's also led to a surge of people entering the field and not all of them are actually passionate about software engineering. Next up, the trend of outsourcing in the software industry continues to grow. In 2024, with advanced communication technologies, project management tools, and a global talent pool readily accessible, the barriers to outsourcing has significantly decreased. This ease of access to international talent has made it increasingly attractive for companies to look beyond their local markets for software development.
development needs. The pressure to outsource is further intensified by the duty that public traded companies have to their shareholders. Businesses are expected to maximize profits and operate as efficiently as possible. If outsourcing can significantly reduce the cost without compromising quality, many companies feel obligated to pursue this option to remain competitive and deliver value to their shareholders. This isn't anything new. Outsourcing has been happening for decades, but every year this part of the industry is growing. In fact, the IT outsourcing market is worth $512 billion and expected to grow to $812 billion by 2029. When I used to work full time, one of our teams was downside as their jobs were all moved to offshore development centers. This shift keeps happening, offshore, onshore, but is becoming more common in the industry. And this trend is particularly strong in countries like India, leading to increased employment, higher wages, and improved living standards for many, which is awesome. However, this trend has also created challenges for software engineers in the US and in the UK, when businesses can access equally skilled developers willing to work for significantly less wages. It becomes difficult to justify higher salaries in more expensive markets. Now, of course, there is pros and cons to outsourcing to different countries, and all of this adds up to a situation where job security, which used to be a big perk of being a software engineer, is no longer a sure thing. I don't think that this is inherently bad. Those that are smart will stay ahead of the game and niche down or specialize in high demand areas. But for me, there's an alternative solution where you can learn a high in demand skill that's seeing explosive growth in the next five years. What's this alternative? It's cloud engineering. So what is cloud engineering? Well, think of the cloud as a giant network of powerful computers spread all over the world. Instead of keeping all your files and programs on your personal computer, you can store and access them through these remote computers via the internet. Cloud engineering is the job of setting up, managing, and improving this network of computers to help businesses run their online services smoothly. Let's use Netflix as an example. So Netflix uses the cloud to store their huge library of movies and TV shows on computers around the world called servers, allowing millions of people to stream videos simultaneously without any interruption. Cloud engineers then ensure that when you press play, the video starts instantly, loads smoothly, and adjusts to your internet speed, all while keeping your viewing data secure and powering features like personalized recommendations on your Netflix home screen. Now, you're probably thinking, why is cloud engineering the solution, Suleiman? And that is a great question. Well, the cloud computing market is exploding with projections showing it will reach a $1.6 trillion market by 2030. In other words, it's going to be a sea of opportunities for those who position themselves correctly. Companies of all sizes, from startups to big tech corporations are migrating to the cloud, and they are desperately seeking the need for skilled professionals to guide them through this transition. And here is the secret. There's a massive skills gap in this industry. Gartner, a leading research company, predicts that by next year, over 95% of new digital workloads will be deployed on cloud native platforms. There's a survey done of 500 IT decision makers to understand how the cloud skill shortage is affecting IT teams. Nearly all, 98% of global organizations surveyed are facing a cloud skills gap. Do you see the opportunity here. And that's why I made the switch to cloud engineering all those years ago. And I noticed an immediate shift in my career trajectory. At the time, I was working as a technical architect, but I quit this job as soon as I realized that I wanted to work in the cloud. The growing nature of the industry caught my attention and I recognized that my current role wasn't aligned with my aspirations. With savings to fall back on, I bet on myself and giving myself a three month window to land a new job in cloud engineering. After a couple of months, I found that in Instead of competing against thousands of other applicants for a single position, I was being approached by recruiters. Companies were actively seeking me out, and it was a complete 180 from my experience in software engineering. Another reason is the diversity of career paths that cloud engineering offers. You're not pigeonholed into a single role. One day, you might be architecting a scalable cloud infrastructure. The next, you might be implementing security measures to protect sensitive data. Now, my own journey is a testament to this. I started as a technical architect, then I delved into DevOps, and then deeper into cloud engineering, and now I run my own cloud security consultant. Each step of the way, I've developed a broader set of skills. And honestly, it doesn't even feel like work most of the time. The satisfaction that I get from completing projects and seeing their immediate impact is unrivaled. For example, in one of my first projects, we had just finished migrating a client's infrastructure to the cloud. In the first month after the migration, they saw a 40% reduction in IT costs and their web 
websites were running 30% faster. And a pro tip, if you can tie your skills and work to direct positive outcomes for businesses and their bottom line, employers will take notice of you. Because remember, fundamentally, we're just solving business problems. Now, you might be thinking, this all sounds great, but how do I get started? Well, the beautiful truth is that you don't need a technical background to begin. How do I know this? My Cloud Engineer Academy takes you from someone with no prior experience to job-ready cloud engineer in just 12 weeks. I compiled the exact roadmap that I used to make my switch in three months into a self-paced course that anyone can take. It's very much hands-on, and you'll be building a portfolio of projects that employers are desperately seeking. And when you join, you get access to an active Discord community and monthly live calls with myself and mastermind workshops with industry experts. Link in the description. Now, let me address a concern that I often hear. Won't cloud engineering become saturated too? It's a valid question, but I don't think so. Why? Firstly, the cloud market is still in the growth phase. Satya Nadella, CEO of Microsoft, emphasizes that the cloud is not just about cost savings. It's about creating new business models, new customer experiences, and new ways of working. So while software engineering has been around for decades, widespread cloud adoption is relatively recent. We're still in the early stages of this technological shift, with many companies yet to make their move to the cloud. Secondly, cloud technologies are constantly evolving. New services and tools are being introduced, creating new specializations within this field. Werner Vocals, CTO of Amazon, says, in the old world, you devoted 70% of your time to the heavy lifting of IT and 30% of your time to innovation. Cloud computing offers the opposite, promises you 70% of innovation and 30% of maintenance. This promise of innovation means there's always room for experts in emerging cloud technologies. And lastly, cloud engineering isn't just about technical skills, it's about understanding business needs and translating them into technical solutions. This combination of technical and business acumen is harder to automate or outsource, providing more job security in the long run. Now let's talk about the future. With the rise of edge computing, the internet of things, and advanced AI applications are all closely tied to cloud technologies. By choosing a career in cloud engineering, you're positioning yourself at the intersection of these exciting developments. But I wanna be transparent. No career is without its challenges. Cloud engineering can be demanding. For example, continuous learning is mandatory in this field, as it is with software engineering and virtually every tech career. AWS is releasing new services all of the time, so that learning never stops. But for me, it's actually exciting to be at the forefront of new technology, so I'm always learning more out of choice rather than having to do it. So what is the takeaway from all of this? Yes, software engineering remains a viable career path in the tech industry. They play a crucial role in the development and maintenance of applications, systems, and platforms platforms that power our digital world. And with AI, you can now learn coding without any excuses. For cloud engineers, they are indispensable as they create the software that runs on the cloud infrastructure, developing APIs for cloud services and build tools for managing and monitoring cloud resources. While concerns about the AI impacts on the field are valid, it's important to note that the top tier software engineers are leveraging AI to dramatically increase their efficiency and productivity. Now you're gonna get the 1% go into 0.1% software engineers. These professionals are using AI-powered tools to automate routine tasks or debug issues, allowing them to focus on higher level problem solving and innovation. And yes, even in the cloud, AI is making its inroads. But to stay ahead of the curve, cloud engineers must focus on areas where human expertise remains critical. This includes architectural design or security implementation, which is what my cloud security consultancy specializes in. And this is the key principle for those just entering the tech industry. Cloud engineering presents a better option. It's easier to learn and there's a huge variety of areas that you can work in. Cloud engineers often have the opportunity to develop software engineering skills as part of their role. For instance, in my academy, we teach Bash and Python. This combination of cloud expertise and programming skills makes cloud engineers particularly valuable in the job market, as they can bridge the gap between infrastructure management and application development. Now, if you want the exact roadmap that I took when I quit my job and landed a cloud role in three months, check out this video so you can make the switch to cloud engineering as well.